Good morning, boys and girls, to another wonderful Wednesday with Mrs. Wilson. And I have a special shirt on today from the Emerald Coast Zoo because my book today is about going on a field trip to a zoo, which is kind of cool. Um, you may see Carney and Joe running around. I sure hope they don't decide to barking at the um, garbage truck or whatever. But this is the book. It's called Field Trip Fiasco by Julie Dannenberg and illustrated by Judy Love. Look at those illustrations. I love it. Let's see what happens. It was the morning of the field trip to the zoo. Mrs. Hartwell's students tumbled into the classroom. They were very, very excited. Mrs. Hartwell, however, shuffled in slowly. She remembered the last field trip. Uh-oh. Look at her. She's a little, look at wherever they went. It looks like a museum. There's a guard or somebody and look at Mrs. Hartwell. She's like, oh my goodness. What is going on here? It took a little bit of rest and a little bit of time and a lot of research, but eventually Mrs. Hartwell was ready to try again. The morning of the field trip, she wrote out her very own list of field trip tips and put together her handy dandy, just in case something unexpected happens bag. Mrs. Hartwell felt ready for anything. Oh man, look at all the stuff she's packing. Sure hope all her planning pays off. During circle time, Mrs. Hartwell helped her students get ready. When does the fun start, Andy asked. Getting organized is fun, Mrs. Hartwell said, smiling. Speaking of fun, let's review your learning task for the zoo. Who can tell me what it is? We're supposed to be animal observers, Madison called out, and write down what we see animals doing, Alexandra added. That doesn't sound like fun, Andy complained. It'll be great. We'll all be focused and learn lots, Mrs. Hartwell said as she passed out the animal observation sheet. Hmm, I wonder how that's going to turn out. It's a little hard to write when you're going around the zoo. And look at it says, foolproof field trip tip number one. Give students a job to keep them focused and learning and out of trouble. <clears throat> well, I'm not sure about that, right? Can I go to the bathroom, Eddie asked, just as he got on the bus. Hurry back, Mrs. Hartwell said distractedly as she assigned everyone seats. Darn, Andy said when he saw where he was seated. Oh, look at right next to Mrs. Hartwell. Hmm. I guess that means he's a handful. Mrs. Hartwell felt good. She felt prepared. She felt relieved that she, they had gotten this far without any problems. As the bus began to pull away from the curb, Mrs. Hartwell looked over her list again. Eddie! Stop! She yelled running down the aisle. Mrs. Hartwell hurried off the bus and into the school and almost into the boys' bathroom. Foolproof field trip number two. Take attendance often. You don't want to lose anybody. So now she's got field trips too. Tip two. I often see teachers counting. The bus bounced along the highway. Mrs. Hartwell was happy. Her students were happy too. All of a sudden, instead of bouncing, the bus chugged. And then instead of chugging, it stopped. Uh-oh. No problem, said Mrs. Hartwell, she pulled out a huge bag of animal crackers from her just-in-case bag. Everyone agreed, agreed that being stuck on the bus was the absolutely perfect way to start a field trip. Foolproof field trip tip number three. Be prepared for the delays. Food always works. Usually does, doesn't it? Because they will get to be a handful. <clears throat> if they stay on that bus very long. Soon enough, the bus was fixed and they arrived at the zoo. Mrs. Hartwell lined up everyone by partner and asked them to count off by twos. The class counted all the way to 26. 
26, Mrs. Hartwell explained when they stopped, but we only have 24 students in our class. Who's in our class? Who's not in our class? Jack and Alexandra brought two little boys up to the front of the line. After a quick look around, Mrs. Hartwell returned the boys to the teacher. Foolproof field trip number four. Partnering up prevents problems. So a couple other kids just got into her classroom, didn't they? Mrs. Hartwell's class started at the petting zoo. Don't forget to fill you in your observation sheet, she reminded everyone. The goat has a beard and looks like an old man, Alexandra wrote as she walked. She didn't see the hay bale until she somersaulted over it. Ouch! Madison D didn't see Alexandra until she somersaulted over her. Ouch! Mrs. Hartwell gave a few hugs as she, hus she hustled her students away from the petting zoo. Just because you're observing the animals doesn't mean you can stop observing where you're going, she reminded everyone. Foolproof field trip number four. Tip number five, bring a first aid kit with lots of bandages. Look at those two girls. They have bandages everywhere, huh? We have a petting zoo at the Emerald Coast Zoo. Don't forget your observation sheets, Mrs. Hartwell called out when they got to the elephant compound. The mama elephant is standing quietly with her baby, Alexander wrote. The baby elephant has his eyes closed. I bet he's sleeping, Madison wrote. This is boring. They aren't doing anything. There's nothing to write, Eddie wrote. Everyone was so busy writing that no one noticed the daddy elephant take a big, long, thirsty drink. Now, what do you think's going to happen? Boy, that Eddie's a handful, isn't he? He's never happy. Spray, splash, splatter, all the students screamed. Eddie screamed the loudest. I didn't see him coming, he moaned. Hmm, thought Mrs. Hartwell as she dried Eddie off and helped him put on some new clothes. Foolproof field trip tip number six. Bring lots of paper towels and an extra t-shirt. So Eddie got soaked. Do you think that elephant meant to do it to Eddie? The aviary was the next stop. This is like walking into a giant bird cage, Jack yelled. Right in on your observation sheet, Mrs. Hartwell reminded him. Everyone looked around quickly and then got busy writing. They were so busy writing that they didn't see the baby birds peeking out of the nest above the door. And they didn't know the sparrows taking a bath, but they did hear the parrot squawk as it flew over Eddie. And they observed something wet and white drop onto his head. And they watched Eddie jumping up and down, yelling, gross, yuck, get it off of me. But even after Mrs. Hartwell wet wiped and paper toweled him off, Eddie was still howling. Foolproof field trip number seven. No matter what happens, stay calm. That happens at our aviary. And I tell them the next same thing that the zookeeper says. That's when the zookeeper appeared and had said with a smile, did you know that many people consider an accident like this a sign of good luck? Congratulations. He handed Eddie a special badge and a free pass to the zoo. Eddie stopped screaming. He smiled. Why does all the good stuff always happen to Eddie? Andy asked loudly, and that gave Mrs. Hartwell an idea. Class, Eddie's good luck is going to rub off on all of us. Put away your observation sheets. For the rest of the day, we will continue to be animal observers, but we will be animal observer rights later. I think that's a good idea, huh? Yay! Everyone cheered as they put away their observation sheets and headed out to see the rest of the zoo. The monkeys chattered, and so did the students. The lions roared, and so did the students. The hyenas laughed, and so did the students. Throughout the rest of the day, the students noticed 
everything. When they got back to school, Mrs. Hartwell's class filled out the rest of the animal observation sheets. They had so much to write and talk about. They had learned a lot on their field trip to the zoo. Foolproof field trip tip number eight. Give students time to share their experiences. So when they got home to school, I should say, they were all able to sit there and talk and about their observations and what they learned and what they saw. That's an excellent idea. And so had Mrs. Hartwell. You at the zoo, foolproof field trip tip number nine, field trips, field trips are for focus, learning, and fun. Especially fun. Well, boys and girls, I hope you had fun listening to this book. I really liked it, and I can't wait to see you again. I hope your schools are going well. Love you. Miss you. Bye. Whoops.